Hey there, it's Boots Own here. It's a Saturday evening. I'm out in the shed just going through some half made videos that I need to finish up. This one, the WMA50, it's halfway through a load on the Will It Wash series. That's not blood, that's jelly. It's actually still steaming. I can see steam coming out and there's still a bit of heat in it. Can you see? You can just about see that in the video, you know? You can see the steam coming off it there because it's cold enough out here. So yeah, there's going to be a video coming up of how to make jelly, or can you make jelly in a washing machine? Jello for the Americans out there. It's just setting up now. I put an awful lot of jello, or jelly, in here, and it's, uh, hopefully it'll set overnight and maybe it'll taste delicious. Who knows? The garage stinks strawberry at the moment. Synthetic strawberry. Right, let's leave that like that. Another video. People were saying that the, uh, this machine could do with a fix up. So I've put the ballast back in, I've put the top back on. I don't know how to fix this bump. Actually, do you know what I'll do? I'll fix it right now while we're here. So because there's a dint on this side, we just need a little, little dint on that side. That'll do it. Okay. Oh, it looks like the bottom's kind of popped off there. There we go, back on. I hope this door still closes. Yeah, excellent. It's not, it looks a little bit lopsided now, but it kind of balances things back up again, if you if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's amazing how easy that bent. I wasn't expecting it to bend so easy. Hey ho, people were complaining as well as the bump in the side of it that the uh, soap drawer was missing its fascia. So I managed to find this one on a Creda and uh, I've, I'll post a video on that coming up soon as well and how to, how to put a new soap drawer on you can see I've just dragged it on with two screws and a lump of wood but actually it, it works really well you know it gives you a proper grip some of them you can't really get your hand in this one no bother at all and if you look at it from the right angle which is kind of down here it almost looks like it's the right one it's the wrong color obviously but uh, it does the job so let's get the angle in yeah there you go kind of meets the curve somewhat yeah, that's pretty good, I reckon. I've also blotted out the uh, features that aren't correct so that the two legends are matching. You know, these things are important, really, aren't they? Haven't done anything with that on three phase yet. I'm working towards it. I got this one recently, and I think there's already a video on a playlist about that one. Vax Ultralight Air Steerable Reach. The uh, brush bar's completely knackered on it. It's just uh, <laughs> melted itself wonky, if that makes any sense. It'll be in the video, it'll make more sense. This pot of goo here is the dirty filter from this uh, Titan shop vac. I'm just giving a bit of a clean up. It seems to work fine and it had all its bits with it when I got it. So it's kind of worth, worth tidying up. Up here, there's a Candy Grand O tumble dryer. Unfortunately, however, it's missing its lower fascia, which means there's not much I can do with it in terms of even giving it away. People. People are fussier than you'd think, and I'm not, I don't know if I can be bothered. I don't like, I don't really like tumble dryers. I wouldn't really want to sell a used tumble dryer. It's just trouble, especially with that tumble dryer scare. Recently, people are fussy, and I'm kind of paranoid about these things, which is, so it's just easier not to sell it. But I was thinking, you know, there's got to be scope for a video in here. I've made a repair to repair the thermal fuse that had overheated and melted on the back. You know, it's a safety fuse, and it's meant to do that, so it's done its job. I was wondering, could I fill it with lint? I've got about six months worth of lint down beside my tumble dryer. Because that's that's kind of gross now that I've admitted that. Anyways, it's down there and uh, hasn't been thrown out. So I was wondering, could I use that lint to kind of start a fire in this one? See if it would self-destruct. And I might have to like bypass the safeties on the back by the element and just see if the lint will catch fire. And, you know, maybe, I don't, I don't want to douse it in petrol or that, but we could put something in it that might help the flames along. Don't know, don't really want to wreck it, but it's it's bizarre, it was left out for scrap. Because the thermal fuse was gone, which is a genuine problem, and if you don't know how to fix it and you can't be bothered, well then that's that. It's really clean. Like, that's, that's the kind of cleanliness from not being used very much. You know, that's a pretty clean condenser, and inside it's got dirt, you know, kind of from being used, and it's obviously got blue jeans, you know, uh, from being used and people haven't taken great care of it but if you know if you've got one of these out in the shed and you just use it when it's when it's raining you can't expect it to get it's got a bit of a dint there actually and there's something was stuck on there and it's come off you know you'd i would struggle to sell this i can't wouldn't really be bothered you know um 
So yeah, I wonder can I get it to go on fire? So if you've got any ideas for, or if you know any of the stuff, some some people who watch this channel would be interested in the other the other tumble dryers that have gone on fire. I think I don't know if they were vented or condenser, but uh, wasn't it hot point or indesit or something? Maybe I'm maybe I'm completely wrong there, but some of those went on fire, and so if we could get this one to go on fire outside, obviously. That would be interesting, more than anything, just to see it happen, see if we could test it that way. The AEG, it's just sitting there. I haven't figured out how the motor works. Um, it's got one of those boards in it, like this one. This came out of the other AEG. So, that's just waiting. I'm not sure what to do with that yet. I've got a couple of designs for motor speed controllers, but they're all for universal motors. So, they're in the pipeline, but, you know, we're not coming anywhere soon. In the meantime, to help me along, I've been playing with electronics and batteries and whatnot. This, I'll just show you it. Um, this little rig is the internals from a Bosch kind of handheld vacuum. I've taken the casing off it. It was missing its uh, dust caddy thing. That's the motor from the brush bar. That's uh, DC 24 volt, I think. What does it say there? Yeah, 24 volt DC. That's the motor sucker vacuum unit, which is quite small and discreet. But this is the battery pack, and I thought this might be good for other projects, you know, completely unrelated to washing machines. There's your charging port, but it needs 30 volts to charge. And I haven't got a charger that will put out 30 volts. But it's pretty neat. It's got two little switches there. I think they're maybe not triax because it'll be DC, but some kind of transistor there. FS306G So I think they do your high and low switching It had a 4 speed switch Well, 3 and off, three and off. 1, 2, 3 You know, it, it, like the lights are on, the, the motor's not plugged in at the moment So But it's got, it's got the tiniest amount of power left in it In the batteries But I think those lithium ion batteries work I think they're 18650s um, I think they still work So um, They're uh, Samsung batteries, so it was good good batteries. This was a 250 pound machine that I found in a skip. Basically, someone must have destroyed the caddy or lost it. You know, and this kind of stuff happens when people move house and whatever. That's not my problem. This is just it's just my opportunity, really. Um, so, any ideas for that? I might throw that in a washing machine. Although, the motor, you see, you can't do much with these vacuum cleaner motors because... They're designed to spin really fast, but they're also designed to have the air flowing over them to keep them cool. So if you're not using them in a vacuum, they're not much good for anything else, unless you run them really slow, and at that point it's kind of silly. Another thing I've got over here, hiding, is a, D is a, well, it's a power supply, but it's got DC on it. Came out of a cash register that I got from a shop that was closing down. It wasn't closing down, it was being refurbished. This little thing's quite interesting and it's part of my exploration of electronics for my own learning really more than anything else. It's uh it's got three DC voltage outputs. I should have written them on with a pen, I can't remember what they are now. It's like 520 and something else. Actually I wonder has it got 30? It might charge this thing. Oh no, here we go. But it's got a big transformer. And then it's got a bridge rectifier in here. And it's got some kind of a step down. Not step down, it's not right numbers on it there. Can I see it? Camera can't get in with any light. Oh yeah, okay. D1193. Might be a power transistor. It might be a diode or something. Oh, I've written it on it, actually. 40 volts DC. 30 volts. Oh, 30 volts AC coming in, and then 40 volts DC, because it's, uh, so that's your rectifier. And then up on the top, you've got 40, 26, and 6.2. I'm, I wonder, could I just shove 40 straight into that battery pack there, or would it blow up? Actually, do you know what I could do? I could shove 26 into it, that'll be alright. I think it's a 24 or 25 volt machine, so I don't know if 26 will trigger the charge, but it might, and there's no harm in trying, really. So that's that's actually, that's good now, that's another job there. This little board, that's out of a modem. Nothing interesting there, really, other than me just tinkering. I've got a video recently of this Goblin vacuum cleaner. It's a really cheapy plastic machine. ECV002B17 but again I found all the hoses and pipes and stuff with it and the, the, the cleaning head so it's a handy machine it works there was a bit of stuff stuck in the nozzle which is just just breaks my heart that people throw these things away because they couldn't be bothered to get a piece of wire and hook out some 
somehow it snots out of it. You know, just a bit of bit of hair or something or a tissue. That's the motor from the speed controller video, and there's the speed controller. I haven't done anything with that yet. It's just been well, I've, I've I've wired it up and used it, but I haven't done anything with it. Kind of hoping against hope that someday I'll get into the lathe that's in behind here. And there's a DC motor for that, and you can see the speed control board just there in the center of the shot, just just there. Um, I might wire that up or I might not. And there's the, I uh, can't remember what board that is, but I've posted a video recently of that control board driving the universal motor on this uh, big grindstone. That's the one with that uses the input from the taco that's sold by somebody over in Russia. And they're a really good little board and I was thinking about buying another one. Uh, TDA 1085C chip, I think is what it is. It's got a little potentiometer there and whatnot. And I'm, I'm hoping to make some boards like that. Maybe, maybe using that chip if I eventually catch up with electronics and learning and whatnot. I'm not sure yet. It's a bit of a, bit of a step. It'll take me a while to get around to it. But like, it's taken me years to get around to even some of the videos that I've made in here at the moment. That's my welding table in there. It's already been used as a storage for other things. You can see the fire bricks on it and the. Uh, angle grinder in underneath and there's more fire bricks to go around the back of it and I've got the, the blower is up there there's a video either up or coming up of that little Alcoza forge blower so I'm wondering is this going to be a forge or something but I was, I was thinking what I'd actually rather than forging metal forging hot metal because you, you know I've got oxyacetylene now we can just heat stuff up quite easily maybe it's possible to make a little backyard foundry and I'm reading a bit about that at the moment and I think that's something I'd like to do but I've Really, the foundry is one end of it, and then making the moulds and casting is the other end of it. I think the fact that the, the making a foundry and lighting it is easy. I could do that and put metal in it and make some brass parts or something. But I haven't any ideas, and so if you've got any ideas for that, I'd be interested to hear them. Those are Allen scythe blades over there, moving swiftly along from the forge. These are quite special in some ways because they're, they're very hard to get. And these ones are even harder to get because they've got the cutter... On one side, the, 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 not the cutter, but the cutter's whole, the whole thing, but the, the driver is on one side, so usually that's in the centre. So we've got two centre ones here on the left and the right, so usually that thing is in the centre there. And what that means is that the, um, the blade is centred with half hanging out each side. But if you want to do left and right cutting, you need the, the driven unit here on the side. That, this will only make sense if you know about Allen sides. So I managed to find a couple of those about a year ago and I've been sharpening up those blades and I, I may make a video on that. I've got a bit of a way to go. I've kind of given them a rough dressing. And maybe a rough dressing's enough, but the machine's over in Ireland and I haven't done anything with it recently. In here, I'm getting into the depths of it now. Henry's. This is a Henry that I swapped the motor over to run continuous with no high-low. This one, I think, is a Henry that the Hilo works on that I got recently, but it didn't have a cable, so I put the cable from another Henry on that one. And then somewhere there's another Henry hanging out. Where is it? Over here is a Henry now with a busted high-low board and no cable. So it's easy, it's easy to get a cable off another machine. That's not a big deal and just splice that in or, or completely rewire it. But the high-low board, I've bought, and I'm waiting for it to arrive, a new transistor to maybe replace the transistor on the board but my soldering skills as you've seen in my other videos are pretty ropey and it's a surface mount unit so i'm not sure if i can desolder it without wrecking it but you know i'll attempt to the board's in the machine so i'm not going to poke away at that now and then i put another video up recently oh it was the henry one actually using the oscilloscope so i've done the diagnosis on that and i'm looking at i've done the the looking at the good one and uh yeah, it's, it's it's pretty simple how it chops the power. And I, so I want to see then, I want to also put the TDA1085C unit up on, see how that transistor chops the power and regulates the power for the motor. I'm interested to do that. Just, you know, it's just for me tinkering away, really. That's my desktop um, isolation power supply. It's basically 240 in, 240 out. But uh, John Ward has got a good video on on why you don't use these for measuring mains power without one of these. It's, uh, it's a good video, worth watching. And then I've got this little transformer sitting in the back, a Variac and a transformer that I'm hoping to make a video about someday. Still haven't done it. I'll get to it someday. That's the fan out of the AEG washer dryer that I scrapped out. I'm keeping it because I think it'll be useful, but there's always a question about what it'll be useful for. 
And then the last thing I wanted to talk about is over here. This is a thing called a Mighty Meter. These are, um, John Ward again has a video about this Mighty Meter. Not this one, but a similar one. Brand new in a box or barely used in a box. He got it and it's a really nonsense little meter. It'll test batteries up to 15 volts or up to 3 volts, depending on what scale you're using. It's got a plug that's missing from this one that does some rudimentary tests on the wiring in a plug, like in your sockets in your home. And you can use it to test light bulbs for continuity. So if you haven't got a lamp to put the bulb in to test whether or not the bulb works, you can use this machine to do it. So there you go. Yeah, continuity and voltage. It's a, But it's a handy voltage tester and it's got a nice big scale. So I was hoping to marry that up with the voltage or with the battery load tester that I have over here because this little DC tester is crap the scale on its rubbish um, it's good for charging batteries but it's not great for discharging them so I'm, I'm hoping I can do something there between those two two parts and put that in a box uh, I need to get that round to it thing someday I should make a video another day about the vacuum cleaners that I have hiding in my garage there's four there Five, six, seven, eight. Oh dear. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And there's loads more in the house and in the garden. Oh dear. It's gone from washing machines to vacuum cleaners. I find it hard to throw these things away when I know that they work, but I also find it hard to sell them because I can't really be bothered <laughs> dealing with the people. People who want to buy second-hand vacuum cleaners tend to want a new vacuum cleaner but can't afford a new one or something along those lines. So even if you've got a really good one, they still think it's not new. And anyways, that's that's a whole story for another day. I'm selling selling used goods. I don't I don't particularly like it or enjoy it. I like I like it when they give me money, but apart from that, there ain't much to it. <laughs> there ain't much to it for my sanity. So yeah, setting this candy grando on fire. Is it a good idea? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Have a good weekend. Thanks for watching. See you later.